all, all, we have all kinds of woodland creatures in, that live in my garage. I'm being large festive. woodland creatures. Yes, that is very fast. Large or like you know, fantasy Middle Earth. Woodland. No, 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 no. I'm talking about deers. <laughs> I'm gonna go with like I'm gonna go with like an orc. You know, maybe a hobbit. Mm. Oh, an orc. I was thinking bears. That's all. No, nah, that was the old place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. No, no, he means he means really hairy gay people. Don't don't be elitist, Jeff. Oh, be nice. We don't That's true. Shame. They can all do right. better than his garage. Sorry, I'm having trouble finding the song here. Check it off your bigger. Even the squirrels friends. can do better than Jeff's garage. Friends. Although there are many nooks and crannies in which to hide acorns. So don't get caught in it though. No, but fun. then they're all like then they're all like, you know, contaminated with, you know, spray paint and engine cleaner. It's it's all fuel these days. Nasty fuel. <laughs> or uh PB blast. Weasel pissed. That's, that's what I was looking right. for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, Chrissy is festive. I'm very jealous. I might have to go a little festive myself here. Welcome to Festive Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of Lemma Champ or Lucky Track Dog League you run, SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussion, tips, tricks, news and notes in the world of amateur endurance racing, and whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or we're lucky enough and Chrissy gives us just a tip, we're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everybody report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental. Thanks for coming back and listening to another Merry Christmas episode of our podcast. Yes. Yeah. It's episode 170, and we're recording it on Christmas Eve. 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 Christmas Eve, Eve. Right. Um, so also, the Festival of Lights ended this past Friday. So a belated happy Hanukkah to our Jewish listeners. Happy My dogs Qu- are Jewish. Oh, yeah. There you go. They grew up in a uh, Jewish household. That's a tough. Yeah. I, I think that's a completely different holiday. But um, happy <laughs> Kwanzaa starting this Saturday. Uh Monday was the shortest day of the year. So for our Wiccan listeners, happy winter solstice. And finally, we wish everyone a happy Festivus. No worries. As for the airing of grievances, I got a lot of problems with you people, and later you're going to hear about it. But for a feat of strength, go ahead and get that E1R bingo card and see if you can get bingo if you're not driving a car. You probably already got at least one, if not two spots. So you best open that. Chrissy flexing the feet of strength. All right. right. Mm-hmm. So speaking of things that we're all annoyed about, or at least I'm angry about, what you working on, Jeff? Oh, wow. I thought you were going to go right into good what, dear my- son of a bitches. <laughs> I guess I'll go. Uh, yeah, uh, today, just today, because I took the day off, uh, I did the put in the headlights and the headlight mounting thingy. Header panel. The, Thank you, header panel in the 2002 one, whatever it was, Oldsmobile All Aero, and sold it and sent it out the door. That's Yay. right. Yay! Somebody sold a car. Put, is that still on the? I don't know if it's still. Oh my on the gosh! Thing or not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is no that on the, sold bi- the car bingo so card? Long. It's been a long time. Uh, so long. Yeah. So 950 bucks. After four hundred oh, thousand, uh, I I I wanted five hundred plus my parts cost, so right. the parts cost were four fifty. So there it is, nine fifty, and it's off to the teenager across town, who's Josh's friend's older sister, and they are literally like hiding it in the neighborhood, and they are going to have a oh my like, like a like a treasure hunt, and they're going to go from hunt to hunt to hunt. And the, pri- the all of their presents are going to be in the trunk. I don't know if <laughs> this like, is good or is bad. My pre- <laughs> is my present behind grandma's car? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. What is this car doing here? Where well, they go from like they, they get little <laughs> things wow. along the way, and then yeah, they get yeah, yeah. the like, last one right before the car is, is she the car. Actually key. Be excited about an this Oldsmobile keychain? Why do I want an Oldsmobile keychain? That's an ugly car. Wait, no, 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 let's be real. What's an Oldsmobile? Is the present under yeah. this gross thing? shitty car right <laughs> oh somebody it's, put it's, a crappy old car where you guys have my presence it, it actually looks pretty nice these days and, i'm uh, sure so it does it's it's we polish that turd like you wouldn't believe most uh, importantly does the stereo work and is there an auxiliary plug 
no auxiliary plug. We we uh, are expecting. No, Does it have a tape player? Tape? Oh, I don't remember. That's a tape player. Like which means yeah. player. If you have a tape player, you have an auxiliary plug. Yes, obviously. you do. Yeah. Well, uh, if you don't have one of the last three generations of iPhones, unless you get like the the dangle, the dongle, the dongle. We have the adapter. Uh, we call it a weenie bit. Just saying. Yeah, the weenie bit. Yeah. So yep. it is the 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 parents of said teenager says fifty fifty. It's either oh, I got I got a car, or it's going to be the. F- this is terrible. I hate the color. Yes, I hate the yes, thing, I, I believe I so, agree. And they said there is no middle ground. There is no like, oh, good, I got a car. They said it's either going to be like, I hate this or I love this. And I said, well, what are you going to do? And the dad said, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I and, said, well, do you want to see it? He said, don't care. And upside, uh, you know, since you did all that safety stuff because it's your son's friend's older sister. Strong possibility Josh is going to end up riding in this thing at least once. Yeah, I doubt it won't last that long. <laughs> the, the, uh, anyway, we don't have to go into that. I also did tree and lights and some other things around the house. And I, I, Chrissy, I'm very jealous of your lights. And I've been clicking now for a minute. I can't figure out how to do it. All it said, just it's in the filters. And then you say, mine said, do we want to download them? And I said, yes. And it took me oh. third, 10, five seconds. And then I have lights. Wow. Excellent. If you're watching uh, on YouTube, you see fun things. Look at that. Video filters. Chris, what are you working on while I pick a filter? I finished the fireplace project. That took a long time. It's and I beautiful. Cleared some- oh, that's about it. It is yep. very nice. You, Chrissy, you can show how it actually turned out. You know, you're right there. But these are like the first people that are going to see it if you're yeah, watching on YouTube. Because it's actually done tonight. Tonight I finally finished it. Oh. Hey. Very nice. Yep. Very nice. This is the only filter I can find, Chrissy. <laughs> Scroll up. I have no filters. Neither do I. I don't no, have anything do. that says download filters. No. I, yeah, I don't have any filters. I have virtual background, which I can't run because I'm on a Mac. Oh, well, that's <laughs> I can run it. I can run it on the Mac, but I have slightly better internet. Go, go, which... go on COVID. Okay. He's found anyway. them, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I found the uh, filters. So... On the subject of of better internet, Metal, what have you been doing? Oh, (laughs) no. Uh, You skipped Chrissy. Well, I figured I usually like to go to not her after me, but let's go with Chrissy because I know (laughs) it. Sure. What'd you do, honey? I made lots and lots of cookies. Oh, look at my background. Cookies. Wow. So many cookies. Uh, It was pretty great. We had a good time. And um, usually have help. We usually have a family friend that comes over and they have kids, kids. Oh, they're not kids. They're like college and stuff. Um, but we didn't have that this year, obviously. Uh, they came out okay. I think we did a pretty good job. And I'm tired of cookies. But I did lots of wrapping. All of the Christmas wrapping is done and ready for Christmas. So that's it. Mental, please tell us your story. Uh, so the pool is almost drained. Still got like this. How m- long does it take to get this pool drained? Several uh, weeks, apparently. Yes. And, and part of that is we initially started draining it uh, into the street because we're, you know, we talked about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Vicky has been draining it into the yard. She literally has an alarm on her phone and every hour she goes out and moves the hose so it doesn't <laughs> flood our yard. So is everything <laughs> flooded? The little pieces are flooded or no, everything's okay? No, no, Only it, short term. Yeah, not, not even that. It's, it's sand here. So, you know, it's all getting absorbed. Oh, good, into the good, sand. good, 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 uh, good. But yes, apparently it takes like, you know, two weeks to work on that. But it's it's down to the last, um, I'd say it's probably about a foot deep just to the, the far end of that. Sunday, met with Slider. We had it. a planning. Sorry. No. <laughs> we had a uh, planning pre-production meeting about our long delayed Star Wars podcast. So hopefully we'll get that kicked off the first of the year. And he is, uh, Jeff, he's wondering why you haven't texted him. You know, you've got his number in your phone. I, I think I might have <laughs> deleted it, actually. <laughs> Slider, like, right? He, yeah, Slider? yeah, he, yeah. He, Anybody that like, wasn't like, I am a real, name. I'm, a, I am a real person. So yeah, uh, I know he's a real person. That's not his real name. That's the key. <laughs> so uh, after an extended text conversation 
uh, not texting on my phone, but chat rather on with Cox Internet because, oh, your Internet's bad. Let's not have a contact phone number. Let's only be able to do this online. No, awesome. seriously, they don't give you a number at all. No. Would you like to chat? And you've got to chat with a robot for like five minutes before you can get an actual friggin person because Cox Communications wow. literally they're like, oh, God, you know, can we just hit the customers in the head with a hammer? No, you're not allowed to do that. Oh, what's wow. the next best thing? So um, I was able to schedule a visit from our internet provider, uh, and I use that term very loosely. Uh, so a third-party contractor literally doesn't, is not an employee of Cox, just a third-party person comes out, and after the highly technical diagnosis of, it's probably your router, replaces our router. So now my potentially 900 gigabytes uh, internet is up to almost 84 megabits per second. So oh. way to go, Cox Communications. You suck. By the way, I'd like to mention I have Sanjeev, who I've never met. I have Skins. But you did pronounce it correctly. Of so course. Good on you. I have Skins. Yeah. I have Summer with an O, and I have Stampy, but I do not have slider summer is actually her real name she works in my office and uh uh yeah skins not this is really so weird <laughs> ever, I, do we even know what show it was everyone right no, i don't know ago. i'm not even gonna try and find it for and, some and stampy, reason you know stampy he's I, on the, the grm forums sure for some reason all of mental's contacts have infected my phone it's so weird <laughs> whatever jeff's phones have they're they are attract social diseases your phone <laughs> gave mine a social disease once it's because they were both sitting on a table in the rain you, it's not one your goat phone. <laughs> yep one goat and you're a goat, one goat. never mind <sighs> well Great. mental if i could get you anything for christmas i would get you better in it you know i'm ready to make a um what do you call that a uh petition uh, go fund me yeah, mm -hmm. it's not a question of money. It's a question of availability. I, as yeah. I was sitting there having a chat conversation with the the customer service person, I'm googling literally what are my options. And right now, I think uh, it, to my specific street, uh, it's via sat, so I can get 1,200 baud dial up over a satellite. And we also don't have which, an, an given option, my so speeds, understood. might be better. Well, five G understood may be. I mean, Las Vegas, maybe you get five G soon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then there's Starlink, but that's more northern US. It can take a while to get down to your latitudes. Bummer. No, or like yeah, but you know, go five G and then just use my phone as a hotspot. Did, didn't you used to have yeah. fiber? Yeah. In Georgia. Absolutely. Oh, in Georgia you had fiber. You never yeah. had fiber. Oh. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. No. All right. No, they don't need fast internet in Las Vegas. They don't do anything that needs uh anything. except for a, a very successful podcast and not to make fun of the one host and big convention centers and stuff. All right. Bad notes. So after his tragic hand bike incident, and this guy has had so many generally tragic incidents, a 54 year old race driver and Paralympic athlete, Alex Zanardi, who also had a special edition 99 NSX with his name on it. Uh, he's showing strong signs of recovery. Michael Taylor writes in Forbes that after five brain surgeries, Zanardi oh, has recovered. My yeah. God. I didn't know he, he had a hand bike seat. incident. We yeah. covered it in news and notes did I? on this show. Yeah. yeah, we did. I don't yeah. listen all the time. I mean, this poor guy, he is, he's, if there's something to crash, he's crashed at this point and it's crashed badly. Um, anyway, after all these brain surgeries, he's got his hearing, hearing and sight back. He's able to respond with head movements to questions from doctors and his wife, Daniela. Italian doctors confirmed that he was able to shake hands on demand and raise his thumb to signal okay, and also oh. turn his head towards Daniela. So uh, not everything in 2020 sucks. He's getting better. In the words of Zanardi himself, I see the human being as an incredible machine, totally undiscovered in many ways. Eddie, every one of us has a hidden tank of energy that comes out when it's needed. He, he's been drawn to that tank for a long time now, this poor guy. Yeah. Ooh, what a wow. mess. Yeah. Good things, but still a mess. Yeah. Uh, let's do some F1 news now that we can't watch any of our races because they're <laughs> uh, let's just talk about what's going to happen next year. So it's been an interesting year. Our buddy Steph Schrader writes that Sergio Perez che uh, Checo, Checo is a uh, secured Red Bull seat for 21, 20, uh, 2021, excuse me, F1 season. We're not surprised by this at all. His previous ra racing team, Racing Point, announced that Sebastian Vettel will be racing with them next year, and they are going to be the Aston 1 F1. 
one racing team. Uh, the second seat's going to Lance Stroll. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I missed the line. Uh, announced uh, Sebastian Vettel is going to be racing with them. And uh, they're going to be on the Aston One racing team. Second seat will be going to Lance Stroll. No, uh, because of his father. Totally because of his father. Lawrence uh, Owens both the team and all of, just about all of Aston Martin. I had no idea he owned a bunch of Aston Martin. Oh, all he of did it. this all fairly recently to make this all happen. And there's so, so much, of, there's yeah. awesome graphs of Perez and Stroll and how much Perez is just like so much better. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Stroll like did a little bit and like didn't fail all the time and like won close to one race. Uh, but Perez is just so much better. So anyway, uh, he's going to be, he finished for, fourth in the driver's standings this year and he's going to be team with Max Verstappen. It's going to be really awesome. We'll see. And I'm torn because I love Perez, but they're going to be challenging Mercedes and well, I <laughs> Obviously, I like Mercedes. So. I, I don't know if I mentioned this on the show, but I'm definitely a Verstappen fan at this point. Good. Yeah. All right. Cheeky bastard. This isn't news in the traditional sense, but our friend Chris Tund has written one of the most compelling stories I've seen in a while. Uh, so head over to Haggerty. There's a link in our show notes. And it is his telling of a 1988 24-hour endurance attempt involving a pair of Yugos, a Zora Arcus Duntoff, yes, that Zora. Of really? Corvette I fame. had no yes. idea. No one did. To go read Talladega, Talladega Super Speedway and some really clever modifications, a lot of which have bearing on our hobby. Uh, Tom was in the GM archives researching a different story and they gave him a folder full of Zora's personal correspondence. And the story is buried in those letters. So I actually conversed with him a little bit and he knew what I knew I had something special when he saw this. He remarks that most of the folks involved in this effort from 32 years ago are still around. He even got a quote from Malcolm Bricklin. Yes, that now, Malcolm Bricklin. I, I knew Bricklin had a lot to do with the Yugos, but I never knew that right. Toff did. So he's done this great job of unearthing all these documents. He really weaves a wonderful story and he does some serious detective work. It is worth the read. Link is in our show notes. And Chris himself promises that there is more to come from this treasure trove that he got of Zora across uh, Zora Arcus Duntoff's personal correspondence. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, this is a awesome. good article. It's worth a read. I'm, I'm definitely going to have to read it now. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so uh, in, in other not real news but news because it's important to us uh community news uh i'm sure most people have a family member or maybe it's you having a hard time this year and you know we hate to hit people up but we're going to do it anyway uh, this year has been hard on so many people but we have a story sad story from a guy we know uh you guys all remember mo who we raced with at laguna he is a lucky dog racer um he's a pretty cool guy he uh recently retired from his day job uh if you remember he had named his race team off of his son who had passed away with cancer uh, but he also, we didn't really, you know, we didn't really talk about this, but uh, he runs a camp for children with cancer and he is doing it to support, uh, you know, he got involved because of his son who had passed away. Um, so anyway, so anyway, so he's, it's, it's a mentoring, it's a rec program, healing program, the whole nine yards. And the camp burnt down in the California forest fire. So uh, the, the camp was brought to Lucky Dog. Um, because of Mo's 19 year old son who had died of cancer. So they would use Lucky Dog as part of their ch race charity, the camp as part of their race charity. So, whew, this is a long way to say if you ever raced Lucky Dog and there was a camp that they were running, maybe you see money for, it was our friend Mo's camp. Um, but anyway, it burnt down. There is a link to support. Uh, they're trying to get uh, $7,500 by December 31st. So if you can give 10 bucks, give 10 bucks. If you give more, give more. Link in the show notes. And uh, what do we decide is the way to pronounce the camp? Okizu? 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 I'm going to say Okizu. So the big thing is, is why this is timely is that the, there's another racer that's matching these funds. Yeah. So if, if they raise $7,500, there's another race team that's going to match those oh, funds. Oh, sorry. So I, I, yes. I, it's I okay. No, that. it's okay. I've read the, I'll read the whole article. Why so she I'm, told you to read through it before stop, you stop, went? Stop, 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 you know, stop, 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 I did read through it. I just yeah. didn't really no, no, miss you the did matching it. word. It's all good. No, it's just, uh, it's one of those things like, it's such a yes. nice thing. And he's such a nice guy. Yeah, and the is. fact that racers are coming together and it, this is one of the charities that Lucky Dog uh, believes in. We love Kathy. We love Lucky Dog. So just 
consider it. A dollar will help. Any dollar closer to 7,500 will get them that much money. And I just want to say for those of you who might be in California listening to us, it was in, okay, Mike, I, I don't want to mispronounce this, Butte County? Is it Butte? Is it Butte? What is it? County, Northern California fire. We're going to call it Butte. But B U T T E, <laughs> okay, whatever the county that is. Uh, you said but yes, Okie Zoo. Uh, and uh, shout out to Justin Stolemeyer and family who are the matching donor donors. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. Wait, 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 we forgot upcoming races. No race results. Do you uh, do you have the notes open, Jeff? Because this I is uh, this is this is in the notes. I know. I just wanted That's, to mention it's, it. It's it's why it's grayed out. <sighs> He's making a joke. That <sighs> was the joke. There are no All racing right. until no race forever. Joke. It's uh, be back soon. Anyway, Half Dan texted us a picture of the Duke Cadillac because we all know he has it now, and it was under the snow and had the chandeliers there, and it was in appreciation of the light that you shed. In each of your E1R podcast. Oh. Check it out. Josh's sweater is fantastic, by the way. He was um, running man <laughs> in, in that earlier. Yeah, he was dancing Hello. today. Yes. Yeah. He was very excited. It was, last it was funny as I saw that today and uh, on my Spotify playlist, Groove is in the Heart was playing. So that's what he was dancing to as it came up on my screen. Cute. Hey, hey, on the YouTubes, Jim B said, enjoy seeing the camaraderie you're all sharing your love of cars. Great. So cute. And my only take it love. occasionally. My Where's the hate? Occasionally. Uh, I'm sure it's there somewhere. There's yes. Uh, I'm sure we just that's more hate mail. We don't <laughs> stop. We don't focus on that. Michael K apologizes for his bad internet interwebs. Wow, it's totally terrible and broken up and no warning from Zoom or my computer. Sorry guys. No it's problem. We're used to it around. All here. good. All right, yeah. good. I got the hate now. Apparently yeah. we got into a small Twitter war. Which means mental got in a Twitter war <laughs> with Ike from the Untitled Car Show about Mitsubishi and whether it is cool or not. Mental, what did you what did you defend Mits? Were you were you pro or anti Mitsubishi on our really? Twitters? Really? You, you got to ask me that question. I do. Oh, God, no, no. <laughs> Mitsubishi is a punchline, has continued to be a punchline, and now they're just a zombie punchline. I agree with zombie. I agree with definitely punchline. Mitsubishi could be cool. No. No. No, no. 1988 to 1995, Mitsubishi was cool. That's when they had the Eclipse. Still, it was good. They had like that Colt Turbo. Yeah. The 3, right? The 3000 GT VR4 was out, and no one knew how tragic it was to work on and how much it was going to break. <laughs> uh, the Montero was still like the Montero first Montero was cool. was cool. Wait, the Montero was cool? Yes. Oh, yeah. No, the Montero no. is cool now. The oh, Galan yeah. No. yeah VR4. Galan VR4, like, man. Oof. Right. They had I, I... some cool stuff. And that was the last time they were cool. They haven't been cool in 25 years. And now they only exist to get people to prove to have 500 credit scores. I like the 95 it. Eclipse. That was cool looking. Um, wasn't the Evo cool ever? Yes. Yeah, it well, broke immediately. Like, I mean, but it was cool. That was like a brief flash of, hey, guys, I'm still cool. Oh. And they yeah. named it. I, I think the, the, the one that drug. they finally brought to the U.S. I didn't think it was that cool. I thought I thought like the early ones that you couldn't get. Like the I'm three gonna widen. Five. I'm gonna widen the scope a little and say like '82 to 2006. '82 is when they entered rally. Oh six, they were still so far. Like that's into the like third, oh, fourth gen, fourth three. gen eclipse. How about oh three? No, no, no. The, but the Evo was it until oh six. It, it just isn't. But it was no. cool till. Okay, you're right. I'm yeah. done. <laughs> now it's not really listener feedback in the traditional sense but the last week the usmc race team was profiled on a video on cbs this morning we've got a link to that in our show notes and uh, it's a great video highlighting the work that the usmc does you can follow them on all their social medias at usmc racing great team uh in the b-roll an extended scene involving the number 350 350z of killer Bossa racing um done up in this really nice donut media. Oh, I saw that. I was like, donut media, they're not running Lemon's cars. Right. And one of the producers at donut media saw this and technically her father saw this and sent her a link. 
And so she reaches out on the Twitter sphere where they screen captured the Z and the words, you know, help us find the driver of this car. We need to be friends. And and we we found him. We responded. And I actually got a hold of Nick and got the email address. And uh, one of the guys is on Twitter, responded. And uh, we put them all in there. We put it team in contact with donut media and donut media is going to talk to them about their car and uh for all this jeff and i are going to get some pretty sweet donut t-shirts awesome i love donut media as if somebody with like three million like views needs anything but i'll post them right there because i think they're cool and they're giving me a t-shirt great uh we should mention the donut media conglomerate has a bunch of lemons racers on their staff Okay, then they're probably good people. Yeah, for the most okay. part. Okay, they uh they profiled the eyesore Miata is one of their uh one of their videos. Great car. Oh, we yeah. did watch them. Now that was a uh-huh. good that was a good profile. Yeah, yeah. because actually they, they're really good. Eyesore is the people who are staffing there. So got it, got it. Okay, let's talk i racing. That's still happening. If you're uh, now that we're not racing, let's just go back to i racing because that's what we did during COVID. Um. Last week, there was a Funduro at Sebring. That is a very long race. Uh, Sunduros are two hours long, um, and they have plus practice. There was a group of lo- uh, Lotus? Lotai. Lotus, yep. Okay, I Lotus, just want to remember. The lo- Lotai. Lotai that ran away with the front end. They all just grouped up and ran away. And then there was a, a B team and a C team, all of the cars that ended at last. I completely went to bed before the end, so I don't know what happened. I don't remember who won either. Does yeah, it matter? Who won? No, those, matter. Those, those two hour of races, I'm sure somebody fantac- fantastic won. Let's talk are, about this week. Are, are the 49 Lotuses new? I don't remember no. that being in before. They've been in a they're, few they're, times now. They're, yes, they're they're new this year. On okay. The racing yeah. And they're not 49 Lotuses. They're, for, they're from like the late 60s. But they're there was Lotus mod, 49. Model yeah. 49, right? Whatever. Yeah, I think the first time we had those was at the Monza race. Oh. Which I, think I remember getting it just for that, and just so I could watch the suspension move as it goes around the ball. It was, yeah. and they've just walked away from the rest of the crowd, especially yeah. in the first lap or two. So well, uh, I'm sure right. they, especially from the Miatas, like, oh, okay, yeah. right. <laughs> it's a little faster. So yeah. we watch, uh, we watch it. It was kind of boringish race, yeah. I think. So um, Ron Harrington had a great Sebring livery, like Chrysler Sebring. On his Sebring at Sebring. And it, looked, it looked it looked like a Sebring. It's like pretty, pretty darn close to yeah. a Chrysler Sebring. There were, um, so as well done, always, Ron. On Sundays, yeah. there were our awesome liveries. They yeah. go all out. They look at our. They listen to all the shows. They try hard. Most of them try hard. And then we find the people that literally show up with a black car with white numbers, which happened at least two cars. And then we wait for Ryan to try to talk to everybody, watch what's going on in the race, and then put a livery on top of his car all at the same time because Ryan is amazing. So, yes, so that happened. And then we said, Jeff, we're really boring. Come on the show. And Jeff's (laughs) like, fine. Okay. And then he showed up. And it was great. I was uh, busy trying to get the tree up. So I know. But we wanted. Mm -hmm, That's okay. Uh, we had a good time. It was always a good time, but it's a long show. Anyway, yeah. this week is back to fun. We have it's trash sprints. Uh, we started at N- uh, NHMS, and then we go to Irwindale. There's all kinds of fun going on this weekend, and there it's so much fun because they're our races, right? So there's practice, then race, the practice, and race, practice, and race. All different kind of cars, all different tracks. Show up sometime between uh, eight thirty. Eastern and probably 1130 Eastern. Some of us will be on. It's going to be awesome. And it's, it's probably a chance that the Irwindale have the jump. Oh, oh yes. yeah. Second you race. can't so do Irwindale without the jump anymore. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, why yeah, would you bother yeah, yeah. without the jump? No, the first one <laughs> is on. at NHMS. And then the second one, and I think the third one are at Irwindale. I didn't, I don't remember what the third, There's fourth no one point is. There's no point doing Irwindale without the jump. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we did that last week. It was a good time. But this week, we went old school and did Lotus 49s at the Silverstone Historic Grand Prix circuit. So this is what these cars raced on back in the day. It is fast and dangerous. But fortunately, Silverstone has a ton of runoff room, which I thoroughly explored. Um, these Lotuses are not easy to drive, even for the aliens. But it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. Or it's, it's a fun challenge. And fr- frankly, it looked amazing seeing all these things going around and racing with a bunch of them. That was great. I um, am in love with the way the Lotus 49s look. Yeah. And just like, the view from 
from the oh. cockpit is wonderful. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you're VR, they are amazing. I've got to get my VR working. Yeah, yeah, you do. Uh, in the end of the second race, especially Tyler just barely beat Carl in the last few turns in a really heated come from behind win. And just as they lapped me, I got to watch it. I kept up with them enough to see them battling it out, and it was it was really good. They were having good, tight, clean racing. Um, fun was had by most. Uh, even Corey got the hang of the Lotus by the end. Yeah, he was he was not as much into it at the start, but uh, by the end, like he was getting around the track and doing okay. So. Okay. I just wiped my eye and I have I have jalapeno juice on my hand. And oh, I'm fucking no. dying right now. Oh, no. So go on without me for a minute or so. I can't read my notes. Uh, you know who uh, who never wipes her eye with jalapeno juice in her hand? It's true. I usually cut the jalapenos. She does <laughs> eat them when they're in a guac, though. Yep. Chrissy's mom never does Bye. that. I think today, though, a special shout out to Chrissy's dad. This was his <sighs> last day of work. He, he retired, retired today. Congratulations. Yeah. Hey, no, seriously, congratulations. Uh, we, we both, we all know it's not going to be your last day at work because you're that guy. You can't not work. But He worked there for something like 40 years. And, yeah. and, and he's also like one of the smarter guys in the whole place. So we're waiting for yeah. contract time. <laughs> Call you up. I will work for you when I say so. When I say so. Because yeah. I'm the guy Tell that knows what's going fire. on. <laughs> that's what's gonna happen right he's some he kind of engineer hold- right yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. nuke plant yeah he drives Me- the nuclear trains <laughs> <laughs> anybody know about medium voltage cable and or what's the fire thing he knows about something about fires fire something when about the fires. Medium voltage- yeah if they didn't have someone that knows about medium voltage cable then they catch fires and then yes. he's they call him, but he is trained. Time. He is he is trained uh, EE, right? Electrical engineer. Yes, yes. 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 He yes. happens to work at a power plant that is fired by a gen a fusion generator. But fission, fission, yeah. you fission. Need, you fission. need, you need those fusion. guys. Not fusion. If it was yes. fusion, that would be amazing. <laughs> yes, that would be totally yeah. different. I mean, but he works on the electrical side. He don't split yeah. the yes. atoms. Well, he works on the power plant. generation. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's when the turbines down, it's his problem. Ooh, the turbines. So, that's what they call it. It's the turbine. turbine. Is it? Yes. No, it's turbine. Yeah, the they guy from New Jersey. Turbines. The guy from New Jersey's making fun of pronunciations. You, you tell my dad. <laughs> yeah. We call for the turbines. guy that is deadless for his whole life, right? Oh no, I believe you. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Sector, anyway. He works in Sector Seven G. <laughs> does so. and he parks in a G five, so it's all good. Yeah. And there are blinkies, uh, just so you know. Yeah. Although we're not one, so it's cool. Yeah. Maybe. Uh-huh. Topic time. Let's go there. Yes, from this conversation. Yeah. So a lot of people think, you know, I want to do an engine swap. That you seems don't. like a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> don't. Sounds like don't. a great idea. Let's nope. do that. They're it's stupid on TV. They're stupid. Don't you know, do them. Doesn't it take like two and... seconds? You're like, I'm going to drop that engine. Chris, let, let's talk about the suspension for a second. Oh, Jeff, let's go back to that engine swap. How's that engine swap going? Well, that's only on Sunday mornings on TNN. Oh, okay, good. Um, just right. making sure. O- only because they're s- sending me a free T-shirt. Everybody wants more power, baby. <laughs> yep. No, no. So I'm Questioning the most power. I'm telling you, engine swaps are stupid. Okay. Yeah, you know, you know what ran great at a race car? It was a boat, and because it, it was pretty much dock, we left it that way, and it <laughs> ran reliable, right? Um, uh, yeah, Chris, you know, same... you, you know what was terrible? What are the most what? terrible cars we've ever had? What's that? The Rolls. Which one? Citroen. Yeah, that was, that was stock too. Also stock. How about that Z? What, what, did mm. that get on the track with the with that the was stock, stock? No, no, no. Sure as hell didn't. You it's know what? A, those stock right. engines suck donkey. That's why. They do. They you should do. check out our Facebook. I did a throwback today on the uh first oh, time I, saw. The, I know. I was so excited it, it worked. I, I was um, about to post it. Like I literally like <gasps> saw it and hit repost and Get I wrote out. it was the best of times, it was the worst <laughs> of times. And then I was like, wait, let me scroll. Oh, it's already been posted. So. Who knew? I'm surprised. Uh, I never post stuff like that. Uh you know what's the su- most successful car in uh three PM history? Yeah, we do. The Cressida. Cressida. A Cressida. Why? Why? Wait, well, yeah, you mean the TR? Oh, no. Um, <laughs> it's also TR a good example a of why this is not a good idea, actually. Uh, because yeah. it had a stockish engine and it worked pretty well. Have you ever driven an LS swapped BMW nope. or a K24 swapped Civic? Yes. It's so good. 
It's just not easy. Yeah. No, no, it's not. And and that's the discussion tonight. It's it's sure you can get rid of your terrible boat anchor of a power plant and join the cult of LS everything oh, in the world. Things! Right. Before you jump into it, we've got some points. Frankly, we've been there and done that. I've probably not done like the a points dozen, that like zap you, right? <laughs> no, we no, we don't. No, no, we might. No, I don't like Good points. Call. Pertronic uh, igniters work? instead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's the right size. Take a matchbook. That's how you file them on the side of the road when you need to do anyway. Um, we've got no small amount of experience and pain and tears on this subject. So hopefully we can save you by telling you don't make some of the mistakes we have um, and help you be a little more realistic about what it takes if you're determined to make a mistake. So this is the first in a series of shows on this because there's a lot to cover, frankly, because of all the things we've done wrong. So this, and, this is just getting started. And like you think that that fuel cell was like a good idea. Like we are everybody sitting around saying we could if we had more fuel, we, had we, more would, gas. Do, we would do a bet. We would go yeah. longer. We We're going to dominate. Win. That would be great. So as if you go back to the listen to that show and we talked about how great of an idea that is or how not a great idea that is we are uh, we're not experts we do our research we've done a, we've learned a lot of things so do your research remember what you're dealing with dangerous possibilities and stay within your skill set and abilities and consult experts uh, you can call us email us whatever uh if you're stepping outside your skill set now the temptation is all over those YouTube shows that make it look like it's a weekend endeavor. Right? I just told you about those. Yes. And Chris and Chrissy and, and Jeff have a Z sitting in Chris and Chrissy's garage that tells a completely different tale. So, uh, and this thing, as we talked about, this isn't even Three Pedal Mafia's first engine swap. So. Yeah. Well, engine swap is one thing. Yeah. And so, swap into a different thing. I mean, as one. I've done like a dozen of these things over the years. This is Not the most. LS into this it. is the most like shouldn't be there swap. Yeah, we'll that's we're, we're gonna, gonna get talk, to That's a good. Let's hold on that shouldn't be there thing. Yeah, because before you even think about this, you just gotta know that depending on where you're racing engine swaps might not dominate they might actually kick you into a different class or make you illegal to run or anything like that so it doesn't matter how hard or how simple it is the very first thing you need to do is all your research with who your series is and what is this going to do now if you're in lemons you can do whatever you want some answers you know sometimes you know whatever you can handle i should say but if you're in scca or you're thinking about taking your car to scca or champ or you know there's so many other areas where actually doing this can screw you right out of the entire place so um but anyway if you do want to drop in a more powerful engine is it the short path to domination the answer is no effing way there's a long answer it's really long we're not saying don't do it we're just going to say you got to do your research. Okay. You got to look, you got to look once, you got to look twice. You got to like, just really get there. And we're going to say that in the next section. So stay tight. Actually, what we're going to say in the next section is don't do it. And then we're going to say it like four more times. That's what I'm saying, but you're going to do it anyway. So we're going to go through the path and we're going to talk about what it is just so you know what you're getting into. Yeah. What do we know? So let's open with the same phrase. Don't do this if you can help it. Um, if you can get away with your current engine, then do it. It is a lot less work. Swapping a motor is expensive and it has a lot of drawbacks and it's probably not why you're not winning. If you haven't campaigned an endurance race car ever, then seriously don't do this. Get it running the way it is. Um, keep listening enjoy our witty banter send us some hate mail all that's fine it's still a lot better like you know find a way to poke yourself in the eye with a hot stick that's probably also better than a lot of this stuff if you haven't done it yet so uh, unless you've got a penchant for paying two grand to tow a car to the track and spending a weekend working on it probably in the dirt and have it on track for five laps and not sleep and then head home if you like doing that go for good for it do something wacky um 
And we've got several teams that'll help you with that and have done it for years. So we can put you in touch with them. They'll take your money. Um, <laughs> they're great people, but that's not the way to do this. And we don't want to send you down that path. So some of you out there are like, yeah, but you know what? I'm on the stock motor and I get five laps and it blows up. Or I'm on the stock motor and I cannot figure out what the hell is going on. And this thing is such a total turd. I mean, it is possible that there is more reliability in something out there. If your stock engine is some sort of fragile glass item and it, you know, it's got Lucas electrics and, you know, you, you pull a, a screw out of the dashboard that stops working. Swap might be in your future for reliability reasons. Um, some, sometimes you, you just got the little, you know, like you've raced a couple of years on the punny motor and it's time, you know, like you've already won B and now that you're an A and there's no chance you have. If you've maxed out your car and you've done everything else and this is the last thing to do, there might be a swap in your future. Um, each of these reasons, you can also just go get a new freaking car. Let's be honest. Well, tell, tell the anecdote behind some of these. Like we've got some personal anecdotes. Sure. For reasons. Um, like give quick, quick versions of those. Sure. Uh, reliability. The Z motor is a freaking turd of we can't get it to run. And we got rid of it because we could get an LS to run. And we spent a year <laughs> trying to get the Z motor to run. Yeah. And it wasn't going to happen. Um, made out of blown glass. And yeah. it didn't fit. It didn't and fit. everything was brittle. And it was, it was terrible. All, it was wiring is made of peanut brittle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Civic, when we won Class B in the Civic, we were never going to get that thing to go any faster. We'd had how much horsepower, Chris? 130-ish. Which isn't and, bad. You know, but but And you... it had a 22-gallon cell, and we stopped once a day. And yeah. we drove the wheels off it, and that was as fast as it was going to go. It was ninth overall. And we had all of the suspension done. We had all the reliability. We had every, we tried to turbo it. And all of a sudden it became glass and there was really nothing else we could do other than swap. There's another category out there that I haven't gotten to yet. And what if there are none more? Okay. If you're running that four cylinder triumph MG sunbeam rapier, sunbeam rapier and you cannot find TR7. Anymore. Yeah. The TR seven never actually had the tr motor in it it always had a buick v6 no it had no when he got it, it had a buick RTR. v6 in it yeah rtr oh, yeah oh i'm sorry i thought that's what you meant mental uh, no no I, I honestly thought the first race with the the old uh, english the old english livery it was still running a yeah no, no, when, had bruce, a, had when a, bruce got it it had the buick v6 it had a carbureted it. 231 uh. Two, three, three, odd okay. fire, yeah. yeah. Odd fire. Well, <clears throat> and we'll talk about why that's a terrible idea yeah. in another episode. But like, we we know that you know um, uh, Grover the Rover had that all aluminum Rover motor that is just terrible. I mean, uh, we we've talked about they this. could keep any Range Rover engines True. for it. Uh, yeah, um, yeah th sometimes you just run out of the motor. Let's, let's be honest. Okay. Uh, we, in our S10, the original boat motor, we were out of those because if you have an 88 Blazer, you make poor life choices and 88 Blazers are getting really hard to find. So we had to update our motor. We didn't do a full swap, but full swap was on the table. All right. But you know what? Yep. Sometimes you can just have a cool car and no engine or the engine is so terrible so you're going to do this and we're sorry that you're about to enter a world of hurt. But when you pull that thing out of the swamp, sometimes you're like that part in the front, it's got to go. Yeah. So Chrissy's going to tell us some reasons that you shouldn't swap your engine that you might've thought and said, you know, Hey, this is a good reason. There is such a good, this is such a good list. Okay. It's, it's a terrible. Let me switch. But let me put the, I have an engine in the back of my garage. Should I just, I just put that in my car, right? Like it's already, I think it was running when parked. I already have it. I don't need to buy no. another one. Let's just, no. just put that in there. No. Yeah. Except. I've got a Ford Capri. I'm going to drop this Camaro V6 Right. In there. I think we have fine. a Miata engine in there. We well, they just, didn't have that. Just, they had to psych that out. Let's that's, just put that's that. In the, 
Miata engine that we have for this Lotus that's never going to run into the 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 um, Z that we have. We just put that one in. No. Yeah, at least it would fit well. <laughs> <laughs> it would fit better than the one we have. Anyway, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Okay. So, uh, except if you have if you're if you have IOE goals and you're skilled, right? So bad decisions one uh, and right, bad decisions one. And 47th Plymouth engine in the F body did not win IOE, but it has to finish, right? So IOEs don't win IOE if they don't run well. Right. Well, the That's story the bigger is they, problem. they had the 47th Plymouth engine and they had this F body with no engine because they put the V6 into their Plymouth because the Plymouth, the Plymouth came to the point of can't, it's never going to do any better than this. We've got to make mm-hmm. it better. And so then they had this this flathead crisis flathead. sitting there, and they're like, yeah. "Yeah, let's put that in the Camaro." And, it and they're win. highly skilled because yeah. they made a forty-seven Plymouth competitive. Yeah. So you know, yeah, still not right. good enough. And the yeah. IOE always has to win. It has to keep going around and around and around a lot. So it, it has to do well in a high yeah. enough standings, and nobody else has to be better than you with a cool car. So don't always shoot for IOE early. And if your engine sucks, then it sucks to work on all of the above. Do not do this. Good. Okay. Next one. Uh, I saw this on the internet, and it, it looks pretty easy. I think we should just do it this way. I, no. I nope. am feeling slightly attacked in this one because I you watched <laughs> LSZ videos way before we decided to LS the Z, and I was like, that, if that guy could do it. No. Nope. That's a bad idea. Always. It's always a bad idea. If you saw it on the internet, check. No, ask your smart friends. Let's do that. Don't look more <laughs> on the internet. Just ask people that. Well, know we've stuff. got a whole series of shows to talk about this. So we'll right? Get there. Uh, yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Great. So um, the next one, you're not winning. We started to talk about this. Um, that if you are just you're not going fast enough, you don't think that you're winning. Let's put a bigger motor in and be better. Um, do other things. Get some training. Do some analysis, go to HPDEs, figure out where you're losing. What kind of pits are you doing to pit stops? Well, is your fuel burn too bad? Um, no, we should. Uh, here's the, the no, I swear we're going fast and we're do HPDs, but the car just can't go faster. So we should just put a bigger motor in it. No, don't do that. Uh, I, it's time for I, how does Alex Levinson do it? His little 1.6 liter Miata. Or I think he's got a one eight. Mm-hmm. Like usually top 20. Yeah. If you're not beating him, it's not your motor. <laughs> yeah. No, look inside. Alex, look Alex, at- Alex, Alex can drive. And he, you know, that's, that's, that's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. It's not your horsepower. It's yeah. probably your skill. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Look at yourself and see what else you can do better or your team or something like that. Figure out what the problems are before you decide that is the engine, right? Figure out if there's something else you can do to your car before you do this. Okay. Uh, last one, you bought this half done swap, uh, on the forum slash Facebook slash Craigslist, and you should be able to finish this and just do it all. Um, but if they didn't finish it, you need to know why, and you better be better than what they are. And good luck with that. I think I would (laughs) rather purchase off of Craigslist a half eaten tuna fish sandwich <laughs> than a half completed engine swap. Oh, and probably. It's probably healthier for you than, uh, uh, yeah. That leads us into the next thing. So we'll talk about the type of motor swaps that are out there. And as, as Chris alluded to earlier, you can go same manufacturer, bigger engine. Maybe it was even on a different uh, trim level of the car available. Uh, and, and they can be as simple as just you, you plug and play. Literally, the, drop this in there, plug it in there, more power, life is good. Um, or you can go just really, really opposite end crazy, like taking a radial aircraft engine and putting it in the back of an MR2. So that is our spectrum. And not, not all of these swaps are created equal. So let's talk about driveline to pick. And I'm going to say outside, if you are not pursuing an index of affluency and if you're pursuing an index of affluency you've there's so much else you need to work on you you've got to be like chrissy said the car's got to run you've got to be good at it and you can get an ioe just by having a really good stock car that's different and running clean so if you're swapping you're to try and keep it as simple as possible so you're going to meet your goals if you have a realistic skill assessment 
I watch all of those internet car shows, good and bad. I am just sub moderately capable with tools. And I also know where I can go with this. Now we're, we're talking about, this, this is a racing show, not a car show. You want to do like this really cool swap to go and impress everybody at cars and coffee or at a car show. That's cool. Go and do that. We're trying to get you on track. So that's where we're going to go with. You want to keep it as simple as possible and stick with your skill assessment. So consider your series regulations when you're classing. Be sure to check those rules. Jeff talked about that. Champ's got a calculator and it will say how much horsepower is your new engine? How much horsepower is your old engine? Type that in there because with just an engine swap before you modify the suspension and the brakes, you could find yourself running their exception class. Like our Civic with only the motor swap, nothing else swap. Yeah. was already like 800 points. Exactly. And, was, if that, and if that's cool with you, that's fine. But if you're trying to actually do this to be competitive, understand what those rules are. AR classes you on qualification day. So it comes down to how good you are at the track, how good your team is, all of that. Uh, WR on Lucky Dog, they've got it down to power to weight ratios and lap times. So look at all that. So NASA and SCCA, if you start doing engine swaps from different manufacturers, it's going to basically make you illegal for just about everything except a handful of the time trial categories. So, so pretty much unless you're AER or Lemons, you can get into a lot of trouble. Or WRL. They'll let so, you do it. Well, power to and, weight because you can script your power to weight. Sure. And champ will, but there's penalties, but you got to be careful about how you do it. That's, That's what I'm saying. You champ. could get yourself into trouble. Not that you're yeah. going to get yourself in trouble. Yeah. So let's talk about the categories of engine swap because all engine swaps are not created equal. They they range a huge gamut, like Mental just said. So let's get some categories here. So we're we're talking the right language. Stock plus is the easiest one. This is like from a, a Chevy 305 to a 350 or a non VTEC to a VTEC of the same kind. Like in our Civic, it came with a single cam non VTEC D series. We went to the VTEC version and you know, that was an extra 25 horsepower. Okay, great. This is a great place to start for motor swaps. It's the least complicated. It's your best chance of success. It, you know, it's basically not that much a different and the differences are known. You can figure them out and you can make it work while the uh, motor's out. Hmm? Go Jeff? ahead. I was, I was going to say you missed my favorite, but I'll, you can finish your sentence and then I'll say, okay. It. So while the motor's out though, do things like the seals and the timing gear and the clutch and all the maintenance things that you can't get to really when it's in the car, fresher it up. This is like a nice, just improvement, but nothing crazy. Cars aren't going to drive any differently. Everything else is going to work. This is a great way to go to start. I would say probably the most popular lemon swap is the supercharged 3,800 where a NA 3,800 used to live. There's like a 30 of them that yeah. I know of. Sure, because that's easy. Yeah, and same same with the three hundred five to three hundred fifty, or you know, we just assume everything's a three hundred fifty at this point, right? Yeah, nobody really much. uses a three hundred five, exactly, or non VTEC to VTEC, yeah, because you know, why not? It's the or same. The, same what's, motor. The, what's the what's Miata VTEC? What do they call it? VVI, or, yeah, VVTI, something like that, or, yeah. or Miata one point six to one point eight. Yeah, like we just assume nobody's running anymore. the one six. Yeah, right, except Alex. All right, so the ne next cat. So that's the easiest one. If if you want to do one of those cool good for you do it that's actually a good way to go yeah do that jeff approves of this plan yeah uh next one's a little harder but you can probably make it work this is the same chassis swap like you want a motor that was fit by the factory in the same chassis more or less so it's a matter of getting all the right parts you know but it, it's known and it's out there like this is like a B series in a, in a 92 to 2000 Civic, or you put a five liter in a 2.3 Mustang, right? <clears throat> it's, it's not the same. You're going to have to change a lot of things, <clears throat> but you know, it's going to fit. You know that they made the motor mounts for it and they made the wiring harnesses for it. And other people have done it a bunch of times. So you just have to find the right parts. So this is doable. It's more work than the stock plus, but it's, it's possible for people who haven't done this kind of thing before. This is, this is again, a good way to kind of get into this um, without killing yourself, but you need some time for something like this. If you've never done one next, can I do it like a, like a prime to that one? Same chassis sure. prime. Mm -hmm. um, like if your Ranger has a two, three, maybe you get that five Oh, even though it never came in the range. Like that's like, that's like this plus a little more. Well, that's what I'm about to talk about. Oh, go on. I'm sorry. Totally different. Next time is totally different, but well supported. Oh, see, I this thought that was like, a little different. Go ahead. This is like a five liter in a Ranger. It never came in the Ranger, 
and they probably isn't, doesn't have the mounts like like from Ford, but you can get them. You can buy them. Uh, also, examples are like an SR20 and a 240SX. Never came in this in this country, but you can get the parts. Or at this point, an LS and a Fox body never came there, but you can buy every single part you need for not that much money to bolt that five that five LS into your Fox body, right? People have been there. They've done that. They make prefab mounts. They make wiring harnesses for reasonable prices, not 800 bucks for a harness. Um, there's a reason these are the well-trodden path because they fit and they usually work. If it, they did, you know, a bunch of people hadn't done them, these parts wouldn't be available for reasonable prices. So um, if there's no stock plus or same chassis setup and you feel like you have to do one, this is the way to go because this is still doable. This not, it's hard, but you're not figuring things out. This is plug wires in, maybe splice a you know, half a dozen wires into the harness, bolt in these different mounts. It'll work, but it's different. There's still going to be teething problems. Next, we're into the totally different. This is where most people end up because they don't consider how much work it truly is to do a motor swap or they see people on TV do it or they're like not really handy, but enthusiastic friend says, oh, just do a motor swap, right? Uh, this is like putting an LS into pretty much anything not GM or not commonly LS swaps, putting into Honda, into anything that's not a Honda or Miata, uh, you know, a Camaro motor into a Capri, for example, that's in this category. Yep, yep, yep. Um, C- Camaro motor into an RX-7. Yep, exactly. This is where you get into big secondary problems. And we're going to talk more about what those secondary problems are and how to solve them in subsequent shows. So, uh, and lastly, there's the completely insane category. This is the Subaru powered Wartburg, the Viper powered Rolls, Snowmobile engine Miatas, uh, Ford V6 rear drive Geo Metros. Dora Tex, um, of course. Yeah. Caddy 502 Yugos. If you're not already insane and a bit drunk and have some heavy duty fab and wiring skills. And friends with the same. Yeah. And yeah. friends that are patient that Time. will likely help you. Uh, a benefactor if, who can give you, you s- millions lots of pe- and millions. Lots of pizza. Pizza yeah. boxes. You, a house that'll let love, you stay there. Ooh, this yeah. is a good And you one. have to love the fabrication part more than any of the rest. This has to be your passion. If you meet all these categories, you're probably not listening to us, or you might be in your garage as you're tinkering on your 502 powered Yugo. And you're like, right. you guys don't know anything. Oh, wait. Yeah. Right. Uh, Don't even go there unless you're already completely insane and you've already done everything else on our list. And you're like, yeah, that wasn't that bad. I like it. (laughs) You. Good for you. Go with God. Do you know know what the number one question? And let us know what you. Let's hear who thinks they are that crazy. Mental. Do you know what the number one question people ask when you say, "Oh, I swapped a blah 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 in it"? Do you know what the number one question is? What transmission you're running. And I think you, you need to start thinking about this, especially for the insane things. Like sometimes that is going to make a de- the decision for you. Uh, and we're going to get into this later, but ne- next episode, we're going to talk a lot about, we're gonna talk a lot about the engine you're going to want and the transmission you're going to want. But yeah. that insane category you know, sometimes you're putting that transverse motor longitudinally. So you're going to that pickup transmission. It's We're going to get all of this later, but I'm just saying that transmission choice might make those top categories different. Like you're like, Oh yeah, that's just, it's the same chassis. It won't be a problem. Tra- transmission dude. What do you, what do you, so transmission is almost more important than engine actually. Yeah. Sure. No, to, to, it, for fitting it. And absolutely. For it I, no, no, I, no, no, I'm saying absolutely. Yeah. This is Tell what I'm us saying. how like, we know. Y- oh. Well, exactly. But oh. you, you oh. need to factor the transmission choice into this decision on whether you're going to go insane or not, or you're going to go easy, or whether this is going to be something that is same for same. Yeah. So like a stock plus or stock plus definitely uses the same trans. It yeah. bolts right into everything else. Yeah. You got a T5, same you got a T5. Same chassis may or may not. Totally different, probably doesn't, but might. 
completely insane, uh, highly unlikely. Yeah. Uh, and, so. and, and, you know, as we're talking about the, the spectrum of engine type swaps, y- your, your best case scenario is you got to beat the crap out of your transmission tunnel. Uh, more realistic scenario, you're cutting the entire thing out and building one from scratch. Yes, all of the above. And I just want to say there are adapter plates. Adapter plate is like a like a plus one on your sword if you're a, if you're like a <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons player. You know, like it it gets you a little bit easier, but it sure as hell doesn't solve everything. And it's not any less time and effort. Yeah, or money. They, they have. You- I was going to say, they like you can find an adapter for like a T5 under like anything. Like you can Metzl's find a an... dog. Well, we got an adapter. Now we can put a T5 on it. Or you can but find you some. Where well, you have the bell housing, or rather you have the plate, but do you have the bell housing? Yeah. Or well, you have a adapters. fabbed part that you think should fit and then it doesn't when you try to fit it in. Yeah. Anyway, that's this when you is... get into weird bell housing swaps, like like a 95 Dakota rear wheel drive four cylinder bell housing lets you mate. Any GM front wheel drive bolt pattern to a Toyota trans like Supra transmission. Yep. We- like weird ass Good. stuff. Like Good. Yep. Th- these are the things you're gonna have to figure out. Ugh. Yeah. Okay. So now you have to figure out what you need if you possibly want to even try some of these things. And these are non-negotiable items. A welder. Also, somebody who knows how to weld well. Let's talk about this. Okay. So P- anybody can have a welder. And you can I got one. this one from Harbor Freight. It was $100 and, oh, on sale. <laughs> not gonna that, might have, that might be okay. Or you get a good Eastwood. You also still have to practice on something else. And then you have to weld well. Because if you don't weld well, if you're, if you're going to make your own engine mounts, which I know we're going to talk all about our Ellis swap. If you're going to make your own engine mounts and you're not a very good welder and you're going to make them, they're going to fail. And that's going to be bad for you. So yeah. we're going to need a like fabrication that. like the 301 for that kind of stuff with how it's not just like like chrissy said fail but also that part you're fabricating that you measured everything out but because you aren't that good of a welder you've now altered the dimensions of the part you've created now it doesn't Welding is permanent so oh you you're not to... that good a measurer either also, yes also a possibility uh, a measurer good yes right all yeah. of those things okay so that's just a welder and person yeah. to weld you need that engine stand yeah. Also non-negotiable. We used ours and we moved our engine around for, I don't even know how many times, but we put the engine on the engine stand, flipped it over, flipped it over, flipped it over. Do you want to put the engine? Do you want to do something on the top? Do you want to do something on the bottom? If you're, especially- we, had, we were on top and on the bottom and in and out like prom night. Stop it. Um, we were doing all these things with the engine and you want to say, well, I want to work on the the oil pan right now. Okay, let's look at the injectors right now. Let's do... Uh, let's put this mount on. Let's put this part on. Flip it over, flip oh, it over. We got to grind that more. Oh, we got to grind oh, that more. that doesn't more. fit. Does that fit? Oh, we got to no. cut that off. Right. Uh, yeah. So uh, an engine stand, Harbor Freight, will be fine. It's awesome. You need it. It's non-negotiable. An engine pulley, uh, excuse me, engine crane and a pulley. Um, Puller. Oh, I'm sorry. Puller and crane. That's what that, yes. Crane, engine crane. Engine crane? Yeah. Yes. Hoist. 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 Yes. I was thinking. Chris like crane. I don't remember every crane. Oh, you mean the hoist? No, yeah, no, 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 no. I was thinking a pulley puller is what I was thinking of, and oh, also yeah. very important if you need it. Right. The very important. How do you get, you to get, get your engine onto? Got the it. Stand, engine crane. crane. Yes. Also non-negotiable. Harbor Freight is fine. Um, and borrow your friends. Don't ever bring it to the racetrack because that means you need it. Or your sad friend, sad sad person comes with a, p- a plate of cookies and said, "Can I have that, please?" Um. But anyway, uh, yes, you need an engine crane, non-negotiable. Um, get that out because you're gonna need it. And uh, yeah, you just have to because most of putting an engine into a car is a shimmy shimmy. It's a forward, backward, up, down, up, down, up, down. A little bit down, a little bit up. No, no, no. Pull it out. One inch, we gotta... one inch. No, no, back. Yeah, we got to go all. It's out. Could take it all the way out. We're we got one bolt in. This. One bolt. No, 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 <laughs> nope. I'm not. My side's not not lined up yet. Nope. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, right. There, right, right there, right there, right. And that's and that's the stock engine. Can can I say yeah. that's what she said? Is that appropriate now? Oh my gosh, so much. All of it. When you if if you're an outsider and listening to this is terrible. Um. Anyway, you need an engine crane. And uh, load leveler. Do we say that? We didn't say load leveler. Did say load leveler. Load leveler. I think you helpful. need a load leveler. Not always strictly necessary, 
but usually a good idea. Way helpful. On some engines, I think it's more helpful than others. On the totally. Honda, to get the Honda engine, I don't think we needed it. On mm. to get the engine in and out of the Z, absolutely. Yeah, you it, have to have it. If you're moving you the trans, to you got to cut have it. various parts. Yeah. Yeah, you have to because you uh, all the time you don't want so the uh a load leveler if you're new to this uh engine you know um crane will go up and down but you need the low level of which will kind of ang- do some angles for you and it'll be able we'll to just like give you a little bit more and then we've also done a load leveler but also put the um uh jack underneath so you can jack it up a little bit on from one angle and then load it on the other angle and then kind of just the- maneuver it a little bit but the angle of the dangle is incredibly important. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and, but you're and, and, angling a how many pound thing that you can't just move. So that's mm-hmm. why you need all of these things. And, and sometimes you need multiple ones. You need more than one jack. You need, you oh, know what I absolutely. mean? Like, absolutely. We had two or three going. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, and a truck. Yeah. Hell no. yeah. Everybody needs a truck. Or I mean, at least a trailer, I, like a solid utility trailer behind. I have fit more engines too. in the back of the my Mazda, and it's been great. Oh, I put a just about almost all assembled um, engine crane in the back of the Mazda. That was awesome. And brought it to my house and said, "This is yep. yours now." In front yep. of the Mazda, did I bring yeah. it to the Mazda? Yeah, you brought oh, it. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so uh, it's a thing, but you're ultimately probably going to need a truck to put all this stuff in because it's really sucks to put it all on a wagon. Tr- you truck is trailer in or solid SUV, yes. Yeah. Some sure, kind of fine. Sure, hauling, hauling mechanism. Yeah. If all you have is something you don't want to get greasy. Oh, no. No, yeah, don't even think and, this. And, and the reason is is because you're going to make multiple junkyard runs trying to get stuff that fits or doesn't fits and yeah. you've got variants within models and mid-year updates and this part doesn't work even though the internet said it did now let's get that transmission <laughs> like it works like we had the, we'll have we a had whole the, show about that come on we had the giving accord at the junkyard <laughs> <laughs> oh yes now Who's got next? You, as a minimum even if you're going from an engine that was available in your car on a higher trim level or a later year, you're still going to have to rewire that engine. That's there's no avoiding that. Um, and it's going to be a fair amount of the car if you want all of this to integrate nicely. So you're either interfacing the electronics of the car or finding a way to splice the two. And this can be alleviated if you're doing all of this with uh, uh, by avoiding a computer controlled engine. You're just going for carbureted 350 or carbureted 302. That's all fine. But you're still, even then, you've got to get the alternator. The engine off that power has got to fit into your car and there's just going to be wiring you're going to have to do you are still gonna have to make the brake lights work all of that if you're going with the old infamous one wire gm alternator on a carb 350 most of these swaps even at the easy stock plus end of the spectrum they're going to be a little bit more involved and that's things like gauges and your stock accessories that you need fuel pumps in tank pumps all this kind of stuff and that's where it starts to get really tough and it requires a lot of patience and a lot of research on your part Uh, i'm glad you brought up in tank pumps because that's what i'm going to talk about hey everybody your fuel system what do you think's going on with that uh if you got a carbed car and you're going to a fuel injected engine because it's got more power, baby. You're going to have to build an entire new fuel system. Uh, so, yeah, you're going to need a, a fuel pump that, put, if you don't know, I, I guess we should start at the beginning because Bill always asks a strange question. Bill, the pressure that a, that a fuel injected car needs its fuel to run at is way, way higher than the carbed car. So you got to like- have. Five PSI to fifty PSI. Yeah, yeah, it's like a lot. You got to have a bunch of, but that means you got to have a new tank, a new pump, maybe a new tank because you got to have the different way the lines come in and go. You're gonna have to have new lines because those lines are only like for five PSI, and now you got to run them at fifty PSI. Uh, so you, you might have braided, you might have AN fittings that you're gonna have to do. These all require specialty tools and pricey bits and a, a whole level of like skill on doing like braided hoses or bent aluminum lines and flaring and things. So the fuel system is going to be something that you're gonna have to work on. Even if you're going from 
injected to injected, you're going to probably have to have a new pump or a regulator and lines and fittings. And, you know, at, at this point, you might go fuel cell because it's kind of the same things. So even like for like, you might want to go fuel cell at this time because you have to rebuild the fuel system anyway. Uh, and the other most important fluid that doesn't actually run just inside the engine is the cooling system. Um, more power equals more heat equals bigger radiators. So your stock is not going to be up to the task. Uh, probably doesn't fit anymore if you're getting a, like a larger physically sized motor. Um, so now you're making custom cross members, fan mounts. Everyone's like, oh, hey, you would just get a pusher fan and we'll get the, yeah, I saw them at the parts store. Like, no, they, they, they're not that great. Um, yeah. So you're going to have to physically huge motor where that draws a lot of amps. That's yeah. how fans work. We'll talk about those <laughs> later too. Yeah. And, so, well, and also just the nature of air is it will find a way around your heavy duty pusher fan because air is going to find the path of least resistance. So you, we're, not through your radiator. Yeah. We're, so we're talking about reducting the front end. We're talking about new fan mounts. We're talking about hoses. Holy crap. The, Inlets and the outlets are going to be in different places because you just got that radiator from the cattle. Just know that each Dude. one of these things is huge headaches. If you have, you have no idea how many hours Chris looks at just pictures Hose of hoses. Oh, he looks at pictures of hose. All right. <laughs> For the Z, I think actually the stock Z lower hose is going to work for the LS because oh, it's in almost amazing. the same spot, right? Ah. And it's close enough on the diameters. Uh, I think a 2000 Ford Focus upper hose is going to be the one to work on the top. But it's all I about, yeah, that. where that is. I feel, like, right I feel like Chrissy would I feel like Chrissy would be happier if it was two in the morning and she's like, why aren't you in bed? And he's, and he was actually looking at porn, but she knows that at two in the morning and she looks in the office and sees the dim glow from the screen and there's Chris with the Gates catalog. Yeah. No, it's just pictures scroll, of hoses like scroll. Scroll. <laughs> is yep. the angle this way i i wish i was kidding and talking about something else it's just like is the hose angle this way it's the only it? way to figure out what you're gonna get it's a lot better <laughs> than going to the part store and holding it up against stuff because the internet has all of them yeah, yeah. uh so uh, quick aside story jeff tells a story that goes nowhere uh mm. my friend eric who at one point was the heir to the uh to the largest independent uh truck tire recapping tire recapper uh uh in the world um uh, he has three three men in his family he's the fourth guy two brothers and a dad and they are all engineers he is not an engineer how do they find enough trains to drive exactly they would sit at the table and like, just kind of like move their hands. This is visual. They would just kind of like, this would be the conversation there. They'd be like, uh, uh, let it turn, turn. And then the gearing did this. And then the, the, the and he was like, I don't know what these people are doing. I got to get out of here. So anyway, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. <laughs> Good this story. is Chris with the Gates catalog. You'd like, yeah. yes. turn. No, I need one that uh -huh. turns here. No, I need, uh -huh. uh, it's, it's, then it looks like a thing. And then it, it's like a giraffe head to a donkey head. It's, it's angles and diameters. Anyway, power steering. Yeah, I don't you're know anything probably, about this yet because we haven't done it yet. Right. You're probably going to want power steering, especially a lot of he larger, heavier cars. And it's good just for, for lack of driver fatigue in an endurance race. Power steering is actually really nice. It is. Okay. Now you're, now you're into custom lines. So adapters, fittings, and this stuff's under a lot of pressure too. Okay. There you go. Not one more thing to figure out. Um, and they time. have different pressures, right? Oh, yeah. Like GM power steering might run at a different pressure than a yeah. 300. It runs, it runs it, yeah, it runs at freedom pressure versus your European stuff. That Metric pressure. Right. Metric pressure. All right. We spent a lot of time on this already, but this is only scratching the surface of the amount of time it's going to take you. It's going to take way way longer than you think. So after I just said that, you just thought up a number, right? Whatever that number was, triple it. And that might not be enough. Can you- Depends on how many 
friends you have and where the and how committed and, they are to actually helping. And um, if you have all the are parts. those friends in the same time zone? Right. Yeah. Do, do you actually have a garage to work on? Are you doing this your damn in your dirt yard or driveway? Right. Some people do it. I don't know how the hell they do it. I don't know. Right. know. right. Um. Anyway, can you reasonably spare that actual amount of time? It's a lot. This is a commitment to do, especially when your race is three and a half months away. Um, Hence all those Facebook ads of swap mostly done, engine already in car. Nothing else done. That's that's the kind of the easy part. The engine is physically located in the car. But yeah. now there's all of the other things. Uh, space. Your two bay garage is going to be full for this whole thing. So, you know, if you live in California, you can do this all in your driveway. All right, cool. Good for you. That's all right. Uh, but if you live in the Northeast and it's January, you need a garage that's insulated and has a heater. Unfortunately, we do. But it's a tiny little you know, two-car homeowner garage, but we make it work. But, you know, you got to do something, but you need to be inside. Um, you know, you, maybe you have a homeowners association. No, nope, they they're like not going to like that. Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, now, this this is doubly so if you have a donor car <laughs> for your swap, which is often the best way to get a swap because you get all the bits you need. Um, but now you've got an engineless chassis sitting out in your yard. It's probably something like a Camaro, and it's going to be nose up. It's very obviously got no engine. You probably don't even have a hood on it anymore. Yeah, Jeff? Jen, Jen said this. Why is the Z not in the trailer anymore? Because it don't have a motor. And it's really hard to get back in the trailer to hide when it doesn't have a motor. Yeah. Stuff that doesn't drive is hard to push out of the yep. way. And you probably don't have a big tractor to move stuff around if you live in a normal... like. But if you have a garage. wife that lifts, you might be able to move it away. Maybe. But even then, you just need extra friends. Or, mm -hmm. you know, chains to Suburbans. Uh, oh. yeah, all come um, along. Come how on. many ch ch times would you... Ch 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 yeah. oh. Kawasaki, Kawasaki Dairy X. If I had right, one. Exactly. Chain yep. with a Suburban that happens more often than... Yeah. Yep. So that's a lot. That got us started. We've got a whole bunch more to go. We're going to get into all the nitty gritty details of everything up to the completely insane swaps because L those people like don't need Like and subscribe us. for part two. Yeah. And part two, I think we're going to go through like part five on this one. We've got a bunch of them. We're not going to do them right in a row, but they're going to be coming along. Uh, we're not going to get to the completely insane ones because the completely insane swap people know what they're doing and they're doing it right now. So they can keep doing it. But uh, the rest of it, we'll, contact we'll us directly. It. If you have some kind of insane swap and we will, we'll, we'll hold your hand and say, that sounds fantastic. We're not helping. No, no. I don't, don't want to hear about people's insane swap plans because everyone has insane swap plans. I want to hear about the people that are like mid project and are already too deep. And like that, yeah, I'll come that's help more, with. That's more interesting. You'll come help with it as soon as our own damn one is done. How about sure, that? Yes, <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, Chris, can I, before we move on? Yeah. Where would you put the LS to Z swap? Uh, if 10 the, the, is Viper into Rolls Royce. Uh, it's about a, a six, six. It's a six okay. because it, it's a, it's a, we're doing it the totally different way, but not, you know, it, we could do the totally different, but well-supported way, but that would be cost us $4,000 for a swap kit. We're not doing that. Um, so we're doing it the totally different way, but the thing that makes it not a seven or an eight is that we're using the stock transmission in so the stock location. Right, exactly. So we don't. There's a bunch of things we don't have to worry about. Like we don't have to worry about clutch, clutch hydraulics, drive shaft, shifter, speed sensor, um, rear end spacing, trans tunnel. There's a whole bunch of things we don't have to worry about. And also, LSs Water. are swappable <laughs> in a more normal way. There's you a can, lot of, there's a ton of knowledge base. Ton on of knowledge. You're not, we, you're not yeah. figuring it out. Exactly. Yeah. That's cool. why I'd say this is probably a six. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's wrap this up. Pros and cons. 
of engine swaps. Pros of an engine swaps. You know, when it's done, it's cool. Like it's cool. You pop it's that a, hood. Tell me that, again. Hey, as long as it runs and runs when well. That pull, when it, when you pop the hood and that motor ain't supposed to be there and people see it and they Hell yeah. know it ain't supposed Hell to be there. Yeah. Like, oh damn. All not right. even when you not even, don't even have to pop the hood. Just like you know, you're at the racetrack. It's it's Friday morning, and uh, you know it rolls out of the trailer and people look at it and they expect to hear a six cylinder and then. Yeah. Or or and, and I'm going to talk about Betty here for a moment. People are like, oh, oh can, can I see your rotary? I say, yeah, buddy, come on over here. <laughs> Check it out. And I open it up and they're like, that's a V6 in your RX-7. That ain't supposed to be there, yo. Like, yeah, yep. you're right. Because uh-huh. those magic spinning triangles are the death. Yeah. So they're cool. There's no doubt about it. It's cool. Uh, another thing, it is likely faster and more reliable than what you took out if you did it right. That is a very big if. And if. And lastly, it actually might be better than the lump you have in there because a lot of lumps are pretty terrible and you can do better. Yeah. But that's that's the that's the extent of the pros. Now the cons, even though they're not using the four thousand dollar swap kit, they have dropped some coin. There's been some expensive stuff. There was the gorgeous, perfect oil pan in the Z that you had to chop up and make fit. Yeah. <laughs> and again, these are, we're, we're coming back to that, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you're spending money. So if you think, oh, if I'll, I'll just swap this engine, like Chrissy said, the one I have laying around and it'll be cheaper. No. <laughs> all right. Uh, it is difficult to do just our, our regular engine swap, just because we all hang out with gearhead people. It's, it's a challenge just pulling out one engine, putting in another. There's 8 million things that connect that engine to that car. And you've got to disconnect all of them and then reconnect all of them. Uh, it requires some fabrication. Um, you, you've got to be able to envision things that don't exist and make them. And you've got to be willing in order to do that properly. You've got to be willing to do it wrong and have to redo that several times chris how many chris jeff chrissy how many times did the z motor come in and out we lost track <laughs> we don't how many know. axles did we put through the seven i mean we did oh right yeah. how many axles i, I mean, mean we did like did five or six it? in one day and i was like wait are we done yet like let's yeah. stop hey, like, I, I, I do remember stop? the z coming out five or six I remember, no, i'm sorry the uh the civic motor coming out five or six times and that was just the day that i was there and i know it had been done that more than that the civic motor so is it, much easier than the Right. It is. Absolutely. It is. Uh, Even a clean, obvious, straightforward, done before swap is you're going to have teething issues. Uh, For example, the Civic. Chris just touched on that. How many axles? All of the axles. Um, Sloman out here on the West Coast. He's got his Ecotech Miata and Ecotech swap Miatas are very common. He's still fighting little tiny annoying things on it. Yeah. Um, It's going to be harder to work on at the track. Almost all the time because you're <laughs> something bigger into a space. Impossible. So you've got to be able to, you know, reach around all that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, the Z blows a motor at the track. We're just going to start drinking beer because <laughs> it, 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 it is so. Gonna get, we gonna we called out. it so many times. We're like, screw this. We're never doing this at the track ever. Yeah. Ever. Um, and, and, if you think, oh, I got this engine swap, I'm going to dominate. No, you're going to lose track time to these teething issues. You're going to have to figure stuff out. And, and it's it's the go back and listen to our troubleshooting on the fly episode because it's never going to be the problem. It's something causing something, causing something, causing something. Problem. If you think it's um, electrical, it's probably fuel. Yeah. If you think All it's right. fuel, it's, um, it's never the it, gas cap. And we, we've touched on this again. If you're a multi-series racer, um, you very well might be making your multi-series car illegal in other series. And Chris touched on it. I'd say for us, for a relatively straightforward, a five on a scale of 10 to swap budget a season. It's going to take you a season just, just to get it. Unless you hate your family and have a big garage and nothing else to do all winter, then sure. But you know, if you like your family, and don't have a huge garage that's heated all the time and six, actually six. have other life things to do. Yeah. Well, and we've got a friend who is very smart, very skilled, great fabricator, very competent mechanic, um, isn't married, and s- still is taking years to do swaps on things that they are qualified to do on. 
trying to think who we're talking about. You know, what, what are they swapping? Oh, Engine, various things. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Several various ones. Well, I mean, like, like, yeah. And, and this is the same conversation I have when people retire. Like, how much do you hate sitting in your house? Like, if, 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 if you're out there and you have like, like six teenage girls in your house all at the same time oh you're never getting an engine swap done a subaru nope. Nope. motor in the back of your chevette might be a good idea because you're hmm. never going to see your family ever again no that's into the restore a wooden boat <laughs> time period <laughs> of i never want to see my family ever yeah. again yeah. and i, I love i, I, I love sanding more than anything else yeah yeah i don't want to see them ever Oh, 1937 Chris Craft. That seems like a great idea. <laughs> Maybe I'll swap the motor. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're coming back to it. We're going to get more and more in depth. If you have questions, concerns, examples, you think we're wrong, get a hold of us on our social medias. And if you're we're doing a cool this swap, is a, this is a bad want, idea. We want pictures. Yeah. Okay. I think that's it for that one. We'll be back. This is a nice that means, whistle wetter. Yeah. You know what that means whistle it's time wetter. for? Just the the tip. Tip. Oh, man. Tip. You guys are excited today. This tip. is great. Who couldn't be excited it's about Christ- just It's Christmas season. I'm excited. Uh, I know. It's Christmas season. That's why. Ho, this ho, gonna ho. Be, it's going to be a quick one. So, so. Uh, what? No, nothing. There Bad are puns. just a tip. It's going to be a quick one. Oh. <laughs> oh. I made that one. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> I'm funny. There are so many hazards around the holidays. I can't even just say all of them. This is just me. A few of them. Uh, you need to watch out for hazards that are that might happen, and you have to be an adult, right? So you have to look out for what might happen. Watch for candles. So don't leave them burning overnight. Watch for the wax might run out. It might get tipped. It could get overfilled. It just watch candles if you're going to do them. Non LED. Okay. I have a candle story. Please. My mother, when I was probably in college, bought these beautiful Christmassy candles that were like gold and silver. And I don't know what the hell was in the wax. Not meant to be burned. But we blew them out and we left the house because we were leaving. So we made sure to extinguish the candles. Those things smoldered for the next like four hours. Yeah. And we walked into the house and it was cloudy with smoke. Yeah. And, and especially the place with, down. Well, I think they're that you could buy decorative ones and like yeah. they're not supposed to be real. Not all candles You're not supposed, are to burn. supposed to be burnt. Absolutely. Right. So candles are like the easy ones. I have some burning behind us. Like they're you watch what you're doing. Make sure you burn them out. Not a not a joke. Like that's an easy fire hazard. Another easy fire hazard. Non LED lights. Okay. So some people still like them. They can get hot if especially if you have them on your tree. They can sit on if you're sitting them on all night uh they're really just heating the branch of a tree so they can catch fire really watch for them if you like the old school lights you don't like the new lights uh watch them because it's really a serious thing um be careful when you're cooking so watch your oven watch your pot holders uh make sure you don't leave them in the oven i we may have done this once or twice so uh, How just do you leave the pothole like uh, it's on your hand. Something, nah, something, something happened. You we just like, you know, one of those like thin potholders you like put in real quick and like we close the door and then it. I don't ever put I, anything in the oven. I don't, I don't really like, I don't understand. <laughs> well, you should help out more often. Apparently. No, this is, you were there when this happened. But anyway, um, I it, didn't put the pothole in the oven. That's for sure. No, 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 you didn't. Somebody else did. Anyway, just watch them. Uh, also grease fires really bad. Don't have a grease fire. If you're putting something in the oven, put some, put a pan or it, something like that. Um, just watch the things you put in the oven and also just, just keep your family safe. So if you have children, um, watch what they're doing, what they can get into. Uh, may, maybe there's things that you don't realize that are not kid proof, which I am going to have one year old in our house. And we have to figure out, I just realized we have a big fire 
pile over there. I'm not really sure that's kid proof, but uh, hopefully his mother doesn't listen. Learn. So um, anyway, honestly, the, the fact of the matter is, is nothing is kid proof. You you underestimate children. Uh, oh, absolutely. Like- Absolutely. Hey, Johnny Action Heroes bag of broken glass. <laughs> like, <laughs> Which is the <laughs> best. <laughs> Don't give that to baby. Henry. John, Johnny Blades, right? I was yeah, exactly, next to right? Yeah. Johnny Everybody oh, like, like Michael Jordan, you know, they shaved their head. What? What? It's not me. It's not me. Go ahead, Jeff. I'll know. So, 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 so Barbie takes a knife. What's the problem? Uh, <laughs> I just want to say, shiv. yeah, no. I just want to say that I, and, I, and I, I'm going to back up Chrissy here. You're probably out of your normal routine during the holidays. Your house is probably out of your normal routine. You're cooking something more complex. The rug rats from out of town are in town. You're rushing because you need to get 10,000 things done. That's why holiday accidents happen because it's not normal. Drink you or not, you're just off, off kilter, right? You're, you're dealing trying with to more like- hot things. Yeah, and, and you're also things. dealing Thanks. with family. You're looking at somebody else, and you're trying to cook things as well. And you're trying to, um, you know, and and this obviously, hopefully, you're social distancing. You're doing this everything safely. I didn't even add that, but you know, obviously, all the COVID things. But even if you're in within your bubble and you have a couple of people over, you're trying to host. You're trying to look at people and and talk with people, and you're forgetting about other things that you're doing. Um, I'm just as guilty. So you know, just make sure that you're watching what you're doing and uh, be careful. Also, be careful when you're driving to and from, drinking or not drinking. Um, make Probably sure you stop. Not. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Right. No. <laughs> you made it sound like whether you're drunk or not, be careful right. when you drive. Well, yeah. <laughs> Especially that's... if you're drunk. You need hey, that, to be really careful. That's when good you're consumer drunk. advice right there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, crap. We're recording sorry. this and sending it to your whatever your uh, one eye. Don't, don't. Okay. Keep anyway. it between the mustard and the mayonnaise, and you'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. When you're, dri- when you're driving, uh, be careful as well, because you never know who else is drinking. But my bigger thing is other stop people for, are drunk. Got it. Please stop for stop signs. I am doing a huge intersection awareness campaign with my work and it is very bad. Watch when you come into an intersection. That's all I got to say. In New Jersey, I heard the ones with the white outline are only like they're optional, sometimes. right? They're optional, right? Yeah. Sure. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just be careful when you're driving. Sorry. Your family's precious. Don't mess it up. Don't be that bad story. Don't be that thing on the news that says, oh, that house burned down or mm-hmm. that accident happened. Don't be that Christmas, guy. Christmas used to be a happy time until the accident. Thank you. Mm-hmm. There you go. No, I'm like, I'm, that's Dude, not that's even kidding. Like, mm-hmm. stop. Uh, Chrissy, is, be that careful. is that what you got? That's what I got. This is a good one. Uh, we're all Christmas cranked up, I think. Uh, Chris Mahan going to quite crazy. Uh, do we have any clue what we're doing next week? Actually, yes, we no, do. No, we oh. do. Yay! I know it's crazy. It's the annual goal show. So we're going to talk about how we did on our 2020 goals. Um, been a year. Uh, and then we'll talk about what we want to see in 2021. So I'm going to ask my host. Go back and listen to the 2020 goal show. I know it was the, oh, I know it was like seven years ago. You know, because this but, uh, year has been really normal and nothing yeah. has sidetracked us. <laughs> exactly. Uh, go back and listen to, uh, to, to, to the goals that you guys set for that year. Uh, we'll talk about how we did. And then we're going to talk about what we want to see for ourselves and to our listeners. Go ahead and get a hold of us. Let us know what are your 2021 goals? What do you want to see for yourself, for your team? Um, we did set a goal of we wanted to win overall this year. Hot damn. I think we did that one. <laughs> we did. All right. You're giving um, away the next show. I know. I'm just kidding. But uh, talk about your goals, your personal goals, your team goals, and we could take some criticism. What would you like to see out of the show? What do you want to see out of your favorite automotive podcast? Uh, what do you want to see us do in 2021? Let us know in our media, uh, text us, email us at everyone.racers, or you know what? Right down there in the doodly do. I guess it's my turn, right? Yeah. All right. Let me restart the song. Thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building, but not engine swaps. 
because everyone can be a racer, even you, but not all of you can swap a motor. Let's be serious. If you enjoyed this podcast, even though I just insulted your mechanical ability, subscribe. It's totally free. Then go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating or whatever platform you have. Even if you hate us, give us five stars and tell us why. If you have a comment, put it down in the doodly-doo right below. Just type right there if you're on the YouTubes. Or if you're listening on your phone, you can go to our Facebook page, everyone.racers, uh, or everyone racers, or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com, or text mental, or just hit them up on the Twitter and start a fight. It's fine. 484 uh, 243 0455. Find us on Instagram or Twitters at everyone.racers. Thanks again. And until next week, don't swap that motor unless you're really sure it's a terrible sucky thing.